morning, dear ones. Buenos dias. Yesterday was quite the cooking adventure. Una aventura de cocina. I hope you are feeling well rested. My name is Miss Lane. L A N E. Me llamo Lana. How are you feeling today? Como estas? You can let me know over in the Five Rose Lane forum. I'll post the link in the description box below. Feel free to share your thoughts and ideas there. It's a safe space for us to interact. Let's take a moment to remember some of the highlights from our journey into the world of Five Rose Lane. Yesterday, ayer, we met Leander and Flavia. We made solar ovens and hand pies. And on Monday, el lunes, we met Ravi and Celine, who invented the dragonfly drip. We also made Sunbeam Mountain monoprints. Are you ready to see what we have in store today? After our morning hike, we'll make something you're sure to like. It's frozen and cold and a tasty treat. And when it's hot outside, it can't be beat. Can you guess what it is? Before we get started with our day, I want to show you something quick and easy that can be done in a flash. Flashlight fireworks. Just use the head of your flashlight to trace some circles on a piece of black construction paper and use a push pin to poke holes in the shape of your favorite design. I'm using a sponge underneath my paper so I don't poke my fingers. You can make spirals, hearts, spell out your name, or even draw constellations. Anything you can imagine, I know you can find a way to make it. Once you're finished punching out your design, it's time to cut out the circles. But you'll need to add some extra room around the edges of your pencil line so you can attach them to your flashlight. I'm measuring about two inches out around my circles. Place the center of your circle over the head of your flashlight and fold the excess paper down. Secure it with a rubber band. When it gets dark tonight, you can put on a light show for your family. In a little while, we'll make another kind of lantern, a firefly lantern. But for now, let's get on with our hike so we can get on with making our special tasty treat. See you there. Marching, marching, here we go. Marching, marching to and fro. I'm in front and you're in back. Let's switch now, but stay on track. Marching, marching, one, two, three. Marching, marching, you and me. You go left and I'll go right. Meet in the middle before it's night. All the sounds of the earth are like music. Sounds of the earth are like music. The breeze is so busy, it don't miss a tree. And an old weeping willow is laughing at me. Oh, what a beautiful morning! Oh, what a beautiful day! I've got a beautiful feeling, everything's going my way. Does your body feel like it's ready to do some dancing? Let's see how the fireflies go. First, they rise from their diurnal slumber. When the sun goes down, they wake up. They stretch their wings to the left and to the right. Now this way, give a blink to the night. Now turn over here and peek through the leaves. Now turn over there, hide! before someone sees. Now blink this way, blink that way, then settle down to the ground. 
The ants go marching ten by ten, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching ten by ten, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching ten by ten, the little one stops and twirls a spin as they all go marching down to the ground to get out of the rain. Boom, 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 boom. The ants go marching 12 by 12, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching 12 by 12, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching 12 by 12, the little one stops to climb the shelves and they all go marching down to the ground to get out of the rain. Boom, 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 boom. Where the air is so pure and the zephyr so free, the breeze is so balmy and light that I would not exchange my home on the range for all of the city so bright. Oh, I love these wildflowers in this dear land of ours. The curlew I love to hear cry. And I love the white rocks and the musk oxen flocks that graze on the mountain slopes high. Home, home on the range where the deer and the antelope play, where seldom is heard a discouraging word, and the skies are not cloudy all day. Oh, give me a land where the bright diamond sand flows leisurely down in the stream, where the graceful white swan goes gliding along like a maid in a heavenly dream. How often at night when the heavens are bright with the light from the glittering stars. Have I stood there amazed and asked as I gazed if their glory exceeds that of ours? Home, home on the range where the deer and the antelope play where seldom is heard a discouraging word and the skies are not cloudy all day. If today is yellow day or Wednesday as the grown-ups call it, then tomorrow is orange day and yesterday was red day. To Sunbeam Mountain we go in July, cause that's when lions dance in the sky. The season is summer and we've a ways to go before autumn burst with her colors on show. Come with me to Zigzag Land. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. I traveled over land and sea and met to know man. Old was he? I asked the man, where did he live? And this is what he told me: Come with me to Spiral Land, Spiral Land, Spiral Land. If you want to live with me, come with me to Spiral Land. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Summer is a beautiful time of year. Why? Because there's so many flowers growing, of course. If your family is growing a garden, 
then you've probably already seen some of the bright yellow flowers growing on your squash plants. If you've seen some of my other episodes, then you already know you can eat certain kinds of flowers. Let's take a few moments to identify a squash blossom so you can make sure you're getting the right thing. This is a squash bloom. See how it's bright yellow and shaped like a star? If you observe this flower for the next couple of days, you'll see it transform into a delicious berry. You heard me right. Summer squash is technically considered a type of big, hard-walled berry, just as cucumbers and watermelons are too. If you pick these big squash berries when they're still kind of small, you'll see just how sweet and flavorful they can be. However, if you wait until they get to be as big as a baseball bat, you're likely to be disappointed in its taste. The best part about summer squash plants is that most of it is edible. The young leaves can be cooked like other greens such as collards or kale. You can pick the tender blossoms right before they open to make pan fried fritters. See how they kind of look like spikes? And of course, we can eat the fruits produced by the summer squash plant as well. There are lots of varieties of summer squash, zucchini, crookneck, patty pan, and loofah. If you have a loofah hanging around in your bathtub, now you know it came from a squash plant. The loofahs that we use to scrub ourselves clean are actually made from old and dried up loofah squash, but if we pick them when they're young, we can eat them and it tastes just like zucchini. Notice how the squash plant grows as a vine? If you don't keep it confined, it will spread all over your whole yard. The leaves of summer squash plants can be tricky to identify because each variety has its own shape. Some are spiky and lobed, while others look more like hearts. When picking summer squash from your garden, it's always a good idea to wear gloves because the leaves can be prickly and wasps like to hang around in them too. Now that we've identified what a squash flower looks like, let's pick one to use for our tasty treat. Have you guessed what we're going to make yet? Ice cream! But for this kind of ice cream, we don't need a churn. For the kind of ice cream we'll make today, we need one part milk. You can use just about any kind, even flavored milks. One part heavy whipping cream or half and half. A half a part of sugar. The flavoring of your choice. I'm using orange blossom extract to make a creamsicle flavor. You can also add sprinkles, chocolate chips, fresh fruit, or nuts too. Lots of ice coarse salt. Rock salt works best, but I'm using what I have on hand. Two plastic baggies and a sturdy metal can with a lid. You might also need gloves and a towel. And of course, don't forget your squash blossom to use as an ice cream cone. Step one, mix the three main ingredients of your ice cream together. You'll need one part milk, one part heavy whipping cream, and half a part of sugar. Step two, add a splash of your flavoring and the toppings of your choice to your ice cream mixture. Step three, shake it up. Step four, now it's time to add the first layer of ice and salt to the can. The salt keeps the ice from melting too quickly, so your ice cream stays nice and cold. Step five, transfer the ice cream mixture into the plastic bags. Put one bag inside of the other bag to protect them from leaking. Next, place the double bagged ice cream mixture in the can too. Pack it to the top with ice and rock salt and secure the lid. You may need to tape it so that it doesn't come flying off when you start kicking. Step six, start kicking. Make sure to use the top of your foot instead of the tips of your toes so you don't hurt yourself. You'll need to check the can about every five minutes to add more ice and salt as needed. 
Step five, scoop the ice cream into your squash blossom, add your favorite toppings and enjoy. Yum. Ice cream has got to be my most favorite food. Doesn't even matter about the flavor. I just love them all. Eating ice cream was a rare treat for the people of Five Rose Lane, something they could only do a few times a year because making ice back then took a little more effort than it does nowadays. Some people would harvest ice from their frozen ponds in the winter and store it underground where temperatures are naturally cooler. Other people on Five Rose Lane built special cone-shaped structures called yakshuls to be able to make ice year-round. This ancient technology originated in Persia, which is now known as Iran in the Middle East. These special ice pits allowed desert dwellers as far back as 400 BC to be able to enjoy the benefits of refrigeration, ice cold beverages, and sweet frozen treats. What's your favorite flavor of ice cream? You can let me know over in the Five Rose Lane Forum. While we're on the subject of ancient technology, let's look at another important invention. We talked about them the last time we were together, when we met Elvander and Lo Olive. Do you remember the sundial? The people of Five Rose Lane had sundials and spades. My grandmother said they only had one mechanical clock in the whole village. And guess who designed it? Leander, the inventor. If you didn't live near the village clock, then the only way to tell the time was to look at your sundial that liked to live in your garden. This was a tradition my grandmother kept alive long after she left Five Rose Lane. When I was a little girl, she always had a sundial in her garden and she taught me how to read it. By working with light and shadows, a sundial helps us to know the true time. While it doesn't take things like daylight savings time into account, it sure is fun to ask the sun what time it is. And while we're out here camping with no electricity, a sundial sure can be a useful tool. Back in the Wildwood Walk series, we made a life-size sundial so we would know which direction was north. Today, we'll make a smaller one, one you can fit in your backpack. That way, when you're out and about, just take out your sundial and you'll know if it's time for dinner. Are you ready to make one with me? For this project, you'll need a wood round, a nail, a hammer, and a pencil. Step one, find the center point of your wood round and lightly draw an X. Step two, mark off the hours on the edges of the wood round, just like you're making a clock face. Step three, because pencil and marker will fade in the sun, I'm going to hammer some holes to represent the numbers for each hour. You can just write the numbers with a Sharpie if you'd prefer. Step four, hammer in the nail slightly to the center point. You want to leave it as long as possible so it will cast a good shadow. Step five, set your sundial outside on a sunny day and watch the hours fly by. I just love to see how people did things a long time ago. It's always so interesting to see how they worked with the earth to make their lives easier. Even though they didn't have things like electricity or cars or computers, they still found ingenious ways to make things work. Knowing how to make things work is very important. So just keep playing and creating and experimenting. And who knows, maybe one day, you'll solve a major problem with one of your inventions. Whenever you're ready, we're going to make a special accessory for our firefly dance. I hope you'll join me. Earlier, we learned a special dance that we can do when the fireflies come out tonight. When I'm camping, I love to sit outside my tent and be as still and quiet as I can manage and watch the world come to life. Creatures that come out at night look and sound different than creatures that come out during the day. We call nighttime creatures nocturnal and daytime creatures diurnal. 
Nocturnal animals include owls, coyotes, bats, raccoons, catfish, deer, and skunks, just to name a few. Animals that only come out after dark have special eyes that can see even when the world turns the lights off. And they can typically hear and smell things that diurnal animals can't. Unfortunately, some of our human behaviors can be dangerous for nocturnal animals. Using lots of artificial light in places where it's supposed to be dark is one of those things that we need to be mindful of when we're camping and when we're living in our houses too. That's called light pollution and it can really disrupt the ecosystem. When we leave the lights on for too long, it makes the daytime animals want to stay awake which means the nighttime animals can't come out to hunt. If the nighttime animals can't hunt, they can't eat regular meals, which affects their ability to feed their babies too. In order to make sure we're not contributing to light pollution at our campsite, we're going to make a special lantern. It doesn't use fire, electricity, or batteries, but it does use the same kind of power fireflies have, phosphorescence. That's a fancy way to say they glow in the dark. What's remarkable about phosphorescence though is that it doesn't require any heat to make light, which makes it perfectly safe for camping. To make your firefly lantern, you'll need a clean mason jar with a lid, glow in the dark paint, some glitter, and a paintbrush. Step one. Use the lid of your jar to hold your glow-in-the-dark paint. Then start making dots of paint at the bottom of the jar. Step two, make dots of paint on the sides of your jar. Step three, cover the inside of your lid with paint. Step four, add the glitter, screw on the lid, and shake, shake, shake. Although these lanterns aren't as bright as the ones you can buy from a store, they sure are safer for our nocturnal friends and for us too. You can use it as a nightlight in your tent and it won't affect your sleeping habits. Did you know that even humans can be affected by light pollution? When we stare at screens for too long into the night or leave lamps on while we're trying to sleep, our bodies are tricked into thinking it's time to wake up. If you want to get a good night's sleep, it's important to let it be dark when it's supposed to be dark and light when it's supposed to be light. You might find though that your phosphorescent lantern actually helps you sleep better. As scientists have found that green light, like that produced by glow in the dark paint, can help you fall asleep faster and it can help your body reset its internal clock. I wonder if you'd be up for doing a little experiment sometime. See if your mom might let you buy some different colored light bulbs and try changing them out in your bedside lamp each night before you go to bed. See which ones help you sleep better or worse and let me know what you find out in the Five Rose Lane forum. Colored lights can have all kinds of effects on the body. My grandmother used to visit the Rainbow Doctors when she lived on Five Rose Lane. Doesn't that sound like fun? I'd love to tell you more about the Rainbow Doctors sometime, maybe in our next series. If you ever have a question about Five Rose Lane, I'll be happy to answer it. I'll share the link for where you can post it in the description box below. I hope you've had fun camping on Sunbeam Mountain. I can't wait to see you again as we explore more of the amazing people, places, and stories of Five Rose Lane. Until then, Goodbye to you all, and sweet be your day. May angels surround you and watch you at play. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. Peace, love and blessings to you, dear ones. May you always dream a new dream, carry a song in your heart, and spread your joy to others. I love you.
and I'll see you again very soon. Adios.